So the first person to come is my girlfriend of many years from Makerere. <laughs> yeah. It will be 50 years soon from the time she came from Makerere. Wow. And that's when I met her. Maybe as she is coming, I can tell you, Makerere, like you had, was their university. Nairobi was just a, a technical college. So people went to Makerere. When the village wanted to see who was educated, they said, Athomete, Ginya Makerere. He is so educated, he has been to Makerere. So my wife went to the Makerere. <laughs> and in Zomo, of course. Yeah. And by the way, it's not just a university for Uganda. People from Zambia, Malawi, from 1930s, all went to Makerere. So that is the main, the main university. So my alliance classmate, because of the CU chairman, warned me when Jomo Kenyatta issued a requirement that, that all of them come to, to Kenya or anywhere in the world where the faculty, where they could find the education, came and told me, I hear you are the chairman of that small university of yours. We are coming. Don't treat us like just anybody. Remember, we come from a better university than you us. <laughs> so my, I was given warning by my alliance classmate. So when the first years came, because they came also with Makerere people for orientation, I would always ask, who are you, ex Makerere? I would say, welcome in a special way. And when you are a fresher, welcome fresher. <laughs> so I met a girl, and I welcomed her. She is in my house. <laughs> Yes, um, good afternoon. <laughs> Rebecca Nganga is my name. <clears throat> yeah, I, I laugh because um, I met somebody last Saturday uh, who told me she cannot use her husband's name. She has a good name. And I agreed with her. I wish I was uh, that time. Uh, because <laughs> I, I was told to change my name very fast until I almost forgot. May, um, may I say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I'm so grateful to God. Because, you know, as I'm thinking at the bit of testimonies I found, enjoying them, uh, seeing Macau here. Uh, Macau, we are not only in Macau, we're in the same faculty. And uh, he was, I think, the only Christian born again in our class, I mean, our faculty. The, uh, that is Kenyans um, that were there. <laughs> and when you meet the people that knew you when you were young, you know some things that you hope nobody gets to know. <laughs> you know, like something that I'm sure my Maka will not tell you, but I know him by nose because yeah, because I, I was harassed by a lecturer. A lecturer. I don't know what, what to say. I, I mean, I've just come from the village. I have come, you know, school, girls' school from one to four, from five to six. So suddenly we are here meeting with everybody. I simply a teacher. He was teaching, was it QM, statistics or something mathematical? Um, yeah, he just comes to class and he thinks he likes me. <laughs> um, and there was nothing, it's nothing wrong to be liked. Yeah, it's only that uh, that was not the time, uh, and I wasn't uh, ready. And anyway, I think it was wrong. Um, but he was so serious. He, he would give us an assignment. <laughs> then get everybody. He, is looking, he doesn't know my name. We were six girls in a class of 150 boys. Three Kenyans and three Ugandans, three the girls. Um, so uh, he would call until he calls my name. So when I go for the paper, the rest of the papers are left there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Uh, and then he has uh, put, he put there Miss Pretty. Uh, yeah, so he, he writes something. I, and you know, I was thinking the other day, that cannot might be somewhere in my boxes in my house. And you know, some, one of these days I will not be alive and somebody will see it. Um, I, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the, 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 that it was a very, very, I mean, it was quite an experience. Those of you who have had issues with lecturers, uh, it can be hard. And you see, it's personal. 
Uh, he would come, I was in middle school at Hall. I mean, of course, you don't know Makerere. Um, <laughs> I was in middle school at Hall. It was one of the old halls. It was, there were nine floors. There was a lift. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. Uh, because you are young. You are our children. Yeah, the lift worked sometimes. Sometimes you go and you found a hole. Uh, it killed people. That lift, sometimes you go, it is water flowing through. I mean, what I see today, and where we have come from, it's a journey. Anyway, so one day I remember, because I needed to hide myself in the Lord, and pray, and be close to uh, the Christians, born again, because of, I'm fearing everything. Um, so I am standing waiting for the lift. The man has dressed my room. What? I just entered the other lift and I saw him come out. And I remember praying and by the miracle of God, politically the things were getting very bad. And uh, so we, by the grace of God, we came to Kenya. What am I saying? Uh, I mean, it's exciting. Let me tell you, I love testimonies. I was born in fellowship that had testimonies. I got born again in 1967. I was in primary school. Of course, we did from six, the same years with Macau since we were classmates. I, he finished in November. I finished on that December. Yes. And uh, so grateful to see Kenya and Karimi. Uh, his wife, uh, we were there. It was uh, when we went for his wedding that... Uh, I went home with a man. <laughs> hey, those are scaring days. Um, yeah, so anyway, it was, um, yeah, it's everything. What can I tell young people after years that God has given me that allow me to look back, that there's some space to look back? I will tell you something. I know one thing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own understanding. You know, I mean, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He knows the way. He is the way. It, it was um, around 1981 there, we had just gotten our firstborn, uh, who to me was simply nice. She looked like her father, looked like her mother. I mean, it was nice, having a firstborn. Um, <laughs> oh, let me just say this. On our wedding, uh, we, I mean, money was not our problem. I can see questions. I know you people have problems. And I know we have made you think that way, but it is not so. We knew the Lord provided. And for a wedding, you didn't have Harambe. You didn't have people to come to support you. In fact, for some of you, even, even, even the gift to take to your parents, someone is giving you. How is it that you are gift if somebody giving you? Uh, there is something to me that doesn't sound right. So for us, you work with what you have. You cut your dress according to the material. So we, we sit here. We are coming from a fellowship uh, that East African Revival Fellowship, for which I'm so grateful, uh, who are no, no, no nonsense when it comes to the issues of eternity. Um, so we just do not have money for something called cake. We are not even sure whether we need it, since cake is a show off. And I think those people are right. What I have seen today, people going around a cake for an hour, I mean, I just think this is not from the Lord, I can tell you. Anyway, uh, we were ready. I mean, we see, we are, uh, the wedding is not about the food or clothing. Uh, that we were very clear. So we were there. I was amazed uh, when my friend told me that Kenya has decided to buy for us a cake. <laughs> And so we got very, very nice cakes, three tiers, um, very nice white um, cake for our wedding. Thank you, Mr. Kenyu. I don't think we have ever said thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember we are in between whether it is right to have a cake or not, uh, but we are happy to have. Yes, yeah, we are threatened. Yeah. <laughs> 
decided it is a proper wedding with a kick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he provided it, and we are very grateful. That's what friends are there for. Yeah, so I'm very grateful. Somewhere at 1981, I am here and married to a young man I love. The, I had prayed God to give me somebody serious about kingdom issues. I met many young people, but were very materialistic, which now I see clearly. I am so grateful to God for that insight because now I see all they care for are people's opinions. The temptations of Jesus turning stones into bread, these ones have given in, but they love the Lord, they're even pastors. Now, the thing is, I realize no, and want somebody genuine about the work of faith. And sure, I think that's what struck me about the young man uh, that I met, that he was genuine about the work of the Lord and for the kingdom, and uh, not uh, having double life. Then, um, I, we are sitting there, and I'm having this lovely baby. Uh, both of us did become. Uh, so, there was a Mokorino woman who used to sing in the radio, Julia Lucy. Those who don't understand. Uh, when, I when I hear the trumpet of the Lord, I will leave everything. I will leave my spouse, though I love him. I will leave a 10 acre land, it's all precious to me. I will leave them. You know, as I was saying, I said, no, not my baby. <laughs> no, 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 no. I actually started sweating alone in the house. <laughs> because, how? No, 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 no. Let me tell you, that was a turning point for me, one of the many turning points. Because I had to answer that question, am I willing to serve the Lord whatever it takes? Am I willing to leave the world and all the worldliness? Let me tell you, I knelt down uh, uh, shaking and said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. I am so grateful to God. As I stand here, you know, I, uh, with my husband, we, we go to meetings. Uh, alone I go, I teach. And uh, I can see one major problem. You are not willing to leave the world. You are not willing. You want to inherit the kingdom of the world and of God, and it won't work. That's why the issues of finances become so important. I am telling you. When I am just here looking, I mean, I have a baby. Baby is breastfeeding, something so new. I never had milk in my breast. Uh, now it has come with this baby. But now, because I have a degree, I have to leave my baby. That's what education means. And as you heard, it's Makerere, not just in a university. Uh, so... I wonder, did education, did my education come to dehumanize me? Because no, no animal leaves its young. And the Indian women don't. Only the ones who wear trousers, uh, where the men wear trousers, which means where the railway ran around, because those are the ones who picked the British uh, clothing. Uh, so I started realizing, mm -mm. I went to school, not to learn how to read and write, but to be a thinker, to question, to wonder. There is, and I want to tell you today, there is no inheritance of the kingdom of God for robots. It is, we are going to rule with the Christ. And we are not going to rule with Christ if we can't rule in this life. Some of you define yourself as I am a doctor. Therefore, I know who can talk to me about marriage. Doctoring and marriage, how are they related? <laughs> Friendship, wife, ugali. I have a PhD. What has that got to do with my marriage? 
I finish my class or examining students like yesterday for their thesis, and I go to cook for my husband. Uh, okay, once in a while, I'll remind him that he is getting PhD kind of food. That time it's not properly cooked. <laughs> Uh, it is not properly cooked, but there is no relationship. <laughs> Let me tell you, signs of insecurity is when you think you are what you do. When what you studied is, is you, because you have lost yourself. And you become a harassment to your spouse. So we need to wake up and ask, who am I? Anyway, I, the point I can say, I had to promise my daughter and their father the, the action-oriented people, I mean, you should congratulate me for living with them. Uh, they, they, <laughs> uh, they, they keep time so seriously that I wonder, what was the mission? <laughs> um, so I have to keep reminding them. Uh, <laughs> Spurgeon said, some children, <laughs> were born, not for us to raise them up, but for them to train us in patience, kindness, love, and everything. And I think that's why what spouses are there for. I want to tell you, the kingdom of God is not a walkover. Those who overcome, have you read the Revelation? Those who overcome, what is overcoming? It is having a man who has no interest in his wife sexually and she is married to him, she has nowhere else to go and you have to live together. What do you do? That's what I'm here to tell you. Get on your knees. Talk to your father. I have learned over the years that talking to God is the only way. There are a lot of the counseling. I know Mama Joki is here for it. Is because we are not walking with the Lord and we are not talking to the Lord. And when we face issues, comparing ourselves to the world, we start feeling broken. Rather than seeing Lord magnify yourself through this experience. Can we start thanking God for the peninas that we have in our lives? People bearing children, people getting whatever they want, but we are not getting it. So that it is not Erikana, your husband, to answer you. Some of you think your husband can answer you, which is like making him an idol. And second commandment, you cannot have guy idols at God, even when it is your spouse. Some of you from your marriages and weddings, what you are defining as marriage, I mean, as friendship, is idolatry. And I know many of you do not know even the Ten Commandments. I thank God for my Anglican background, where we memorized them. I may not um, quote them in English, but it's okay. <laughs> know them whichever language. So, I want to tell you, if you are Hannah, and there is dryness where you are, go to the temple of the Lord. And the temple is not where men are asking for tithes and those kinds of control and manipulation, overflow of the colonialism. No. You are the priest if you are born again. Go to God. Talk to God and somewhere will be born. Because God wants to use you. That's what I have realized in my life. Let me tell you one thing I will, tell, I will say about myself. I am a woman of no status. I don't pass exams. <laughs> now they ask the other side. <laughs> yeah, when you hear people talking makerere, there is another side that you don't hear. That they fail exams, no promotions, no jobs with status. Like these days, anybody to be invited to speak anywhere, you need to have a, a CEO. <laughs> I remember one time I got an, uh, an advert uh, inviting people, um, CEOs of organizations for a, a meeting in uh, Eastbourne in Britain. I have an, an NGO where my co-directors have gone to be the Lord. I'm the only one left called Livestream. I wrote and I was invited and I went. <laughs> That's why I say anybody can be CEO. I mean, just write. 
and you be and by the way i wrote the constitution they never thought i went to school all i need is get two three constitutions and i can construct mine i mean why are you so helpless i mean seriously. i made my own clothes because i don't have to have done domestic science oh i need our scissors and a piece i mean i can put it together are you getting me I mean, there is something that is illogical, which school has done to you where it be, you believe that you must be taught. And I think you can teach yourself. So, to me, learn the language of prayer. When friendship is faded, because it does, pray. When you cannot love your husband anymore, because Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, you know, loving the unlovable is a prayer couple in marriage. Let's be honest with you. There are times there is nothing to love. I mean, you know the fruit of the spirit, wrong suffering and wrong bear. We don't say those things in public. <laughs> but me, I know they are there. And I am telling you, feeling like walking out, I was so excited when Mrs. Billy Graham said that she felt like leaving, leaving him. Uh, no, she didn't feel like leaving him. She felt like murdering him. Um, yeah, I thought that's very good. I mean, it's honest. <laughs> Yes, so then get back. Who are you? Whose are you? Is Jesus Christ your Lord? What, I mean, he brought you into that marriage so that you can pray a man who has no vision or idea of the kingdom into the kingdom. Don't sit here nurturing a man you can see is going to hell very busy but really not working with the Lord. And for you, you are not put there to see. You are put there to pray. That's my job. That's my role. That's what I do. I pray. I have no title. I have no nothing. But the Lord tells me, what do you need? Thank you. Ask me. Thank you. Ask me. I went to that garden place. I never paid a shilling. The Lord provided I am the person who has experienced God's miracles in ways that I can't even tell you. A food will come. Mrs. Nganga, are you going somewhere? We were praying and the Lord put in our minds that we give you our tithe. Uh, you know, you get that. And for sure, I was having, I was praying. There is a God in heaven. I just wanted to mention, let me say this, uh, why I came late. Um, I recently, I am still teaching and enjoying it. That's why I'm titleless. Other than the fact that uh, now with a PhD, they call me doctor, uh, which is okay. Uh, doctor or not doctor, uh, I mean, that's not the issue. I mean, in academics, you have to learn how do you examine this as if you can't write one. Yeah, so it's part of my job. Uh, it doesn't elevate me. It doesn't make me. I went to school so that I read. I don't read for certificates. I read for knowledge. I look for the knowledge I need, not necessarily for certification. That's the liberation I have. So, uh, this, I just realized, wow, well, yeah, this young man uh, becoming a bit old and enjoying saying he's very old um, can be very busy. He was in our rock universities last Sunday. Sometimes I'm not, he tells me as he's going out. <laughs> yeah, because I keep thinking, uh, he's going to Muranga University tomorrow. Okay, I'm also going somewhere else. Uh, so the thing is, I, I start seeing, feeling like I'm having extra time. And I have energy. I ask the Lord. That Lord, is there something you want me to do? I'm praying for mission. By the way, I even asked the Lord, I feel like going abroad. And you know he provides. I am telling you my secret. I am well provided. I don't need titles. I want to talk even to the president. And I'll get it. So the thing is, uh, and you don't have to show off or, or have cameras. <laughs> there is a God in heaven. He sends us. So I prayed. Now the Lord gave me missions. The Lord give me uh, missions. So I'm preparing to speak this evening. I'm preparing to speak tomorrow morning. I'm preparing to speak. I'm having quite a series of them. So I had to take some time because I needed to at least get a bit organized. Yeah, because you can't do the, uh, God's work anyhow. 
it's not a show off. You must know who has sent you, who you are accountable to, and therefore prepare appropriately. It is not what will they think of me. I hate your culture. One bit of your culture. The one of clapping. People clap for nothing. <laughs> I am a tender as a person. If it is God who has sent me, it is to God you say thank you. If I preach well, it is to God you say thank you. But here, appreciate, preacher, appreciate, be upstanding, which is English of another world. Uh, so the thing is, um, uh, I think it is important. One, have your mind awake. Think, why am I doing this? What does it mean? With what effect? Love your wife. If you don't love her, are you going to marry another? If you marry another, will she be different? How do, what is to love a husband? So, Lord, teach me how to love Johnny Nganga. How to love his relatives. Because my relatives come in very easily. I know them. But his relatives are strange. Help me to be relevant. <laughs> Help me to now be you relevant. Have to stop yeah, that. so that, that, well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that, uh, okay, habits. Thank you, we have had. <laughs> habits yeah. are learned early in life, and you cannot undo them. Thank Just you. like you can't erase memory. Thank you. What do you do? You must learn new information to replace the old. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.